students today we are here to study walking cooler so this is a walking cooler installed at kg engineering division ndri so here you can see this is just like a small cold storage so this is the door and a handle for this door so from inside we can see that this is the cabinet or the cooling space wherein we can store dairy products so this is the diffuser unit from where the cold air will be circulated inside this cooling unit and here we are having rack for storing various dairy products required to be cold in this floor case we can see this floor is made up of checkered board just like the boards used for vehicles and at the walls we can see these are stainless steel walls which are having insulation from the back side so these are panel mounted walls which are having insulation panels installed and the insulation thickness is about 10 cm or 100 mm the storage capacity of this cabinet is 2 m by 2 m by 2 m so here we can see this is a cubical kind of space so 2 m is the width of this space then 2 m depth and 2 m height so now coming on to the back side of this unit Here we are seeing a cabinet which is housing the compressor, condenser, and the air circulation part of this unit. So at the back side of this walk-in cooler, we can see that there are two pipelines coming out. So one is of a larger diameter and insulated one, and another is of smaller diameter uninsulated. This yellow colored line. So this larger diameter line is coming from the evaporator carrying the vapor refrigerant so by following this line we can see that it is coming like this to this unit and entering at this point here so at this point we can see that this pipeline is then coming to this black colored unit here so this black colored unit which is carrying this pipeline this is a vapor separator so this vapor separator will be used to separate out liquid refrigerant if any is left after the evaporator because if any liquid refrigerant is supplied to the compressor it will not be compressed because liquids are practically incompressible so how this liquid separator works is that it has a vertical wall extending from the top side and not touching the bottom side of the cylinder and this is how it will be just letting the vapors only the vapors will be coming to this pipeline and that vapor part will be then going to the compressor so via this pipeline we can see that it is coming using this pipeline to the compressor here so this is the compressor suction and after this this is the compressor discharge so this unit here we can see this is the compressor unit this blue colored unit and this is having this electrical supplied at this point now this is a reciprocating compressor hermetically sealed one and this suction and discharge line we can see there is a difference in diameter of pipeline so this is a larger diameter pipeline which is suction and here we are having a smaller diameter pipeline which is discharge both of these pipelines are having these connections also coming out of it after this a discharge line we can see that this red colored line it is going to this condenser by this pipeline here this condenser is a filled tube heat exchanger in the tubes we are having high temperature high pressure vapor refrigerant from the compressor to be liquefied by using this condenser here and it will be condensed by using the temperature difference of the refrigerant and the air so air will be sucked from this plate fins by using the these fans here so we are having these two fans which will be drawing air from this unit via these fins so whatever room temperature air we are having in this chamber so here we can see it is coming from this side so this side these fins are open to air at this back side so air will be sucked in from the room from these fins and it will cool the refrigerant after the refrigerant has been cooled it will be liquefied and it will come out via this pipeline at this side so this yellow colored pipeline here we can see this is of much smaller diameter than this suction and discharge pipeline so just for comparison we can see this is the suction line which is having
having larger diameter discharge line which is having a bit smaller diameter and finally after condenser we are having this liquid refrigerant line so this liquid refrigerant line as it is requiring lesser volumetric flow rate due to low specific volume of liquid we are having a lesser diameter tube now coming on to the safety features here we can see that those p joints which were coming from the compressor the suction and discharge are coming to here so this is lphp cutout and in parallel to this lphp cutout these are two pressure gauges so this red line is from discharge of compressor both at this pressure gauge and this hp cutout here and this another pipeline this is lp cut in and this pressure gauge both in parallel so here in this lp hp cut out here we can see that we are having these two windows one of a larger size another of a smaller size so this is the lp side this is hp side we can just see here this is the hp cut out here we are having pressure ranges from 10 to 30 bars and we are having pressure ranges from 0 to 6 bar these are the indicators here so here we can see this is the indicator at which which this pressure is set at LP side and this is the pressure at which it is set at the HP side. So if the pressure of the compressor suction and discharge, if it is not within this set pressure limit, then this relay will not let the electrical supply go to the compressor and compressor power supply will be switched off and it will not run anymore. So this is how this LP HP cutout will be working. Now coming on to this side, after this yellow line we can see there is a red cylinder cylinder here so this red cylinder is the receiver some the work of receiver is to collect and store liquid refrigerant coming from the condenser so as to supply the refrigerant in required amount to the next component so here we are seeing we are having a valve so this is a manual valve which will we will be opening when the system is required to be switched on and we can close it in the case when the system is required to be switched off for a longer duration otherwise we will keep it in on position after this valve we are having this filter dryer unit so here this is filter dryer so this is for refrigerant and we are also having a direction of flow indicated here so the function of filter dryer is first to filter out any dust dirt debris component from the refrigerant so that it does not choke the expansion valve and the dryer component is to remove the moisture if any is there in the refrigerant after this filter dryer unit we are having this solenoid valve so this solenoid valve is electrical valve which will be switched on only when the compressor system is switched on so it is electrically connected and of NC type NC means normally closed so it will be only open when it is having some electrical signal and if there is no power then it will be switched off so after this liquid refrigerant line is going via this path here so here uh, via this path to this side and entering the evaporator unit from this side so this is the inlet to evaporator and this is outlet from the evaporator unit here we are again seeing that there are some T junction coming out of these pipelines at this side so this is coming into the evaporator and this is for the another pipeline which is at the exit of evaporator so these two pipelines are going to the pressure gauges here so here we are seeing there are two pressure gauges so these two pressure gauges will be used to indicate the pressure for the suction and discharge of the evaporator. Now coming to the evaporator side of the system, so here we can see in this cavity that is the diffuser unit. In that diffuser unit, we are having evaporator coils at the back of it. So at the evaporator coils, we can just see that this is the diffuser fan which will be sucking the air from this evaporator coils which is just like the plate and fin arrangement of the condenser we have just seen. Now coming at the back side, so here we are seeing these lines, the line which is coming from the condenser carrying the liquid refrigerant. This line is going out of the evaporator and this line will be carrying vapor refrigerant to be compressed and here inside we can see that this is the evaporator so this is the evaporator which is having these plates these plates will be from where the air will be sucked by that fan so we can see a fan is there so that fan will be sucking the air by these fins and these fins are having 
दीज ट्यूब वेयर वी विल बी सप्लाइंग द लिक्विड रेफ्रिजरेंट कमिंग फ्रॉम द कंडेंसर सो हेयर वी आर सींग दिस इज द एक्सपेंशन वाल सो दिस इज अ थर्मोस्टेटिक एक्सपेंशन वाल सो दिस थर्मोस्टेटिक एक्सपेंशन वाल देर इज अ कैपिलरी ट्यूब हियर विच इज कनेक्टेड टू अ फिलर बल्ब दिस साइड सो दिस फिलर बल्ब विल बी रैप्ड अराउंड दिस आउट गोइंग डिस्चार्ज लाइन सो इट विल बी सेंसिंग द टेम्परेचर ऑफ आउट गोइंग वेपर रेफ्रिजरेंट सो दैट इट विल बी कंट्रोलिंग द फ्लो ऑफ रेफ्रिजरेंट कमिंग इन टू द इवेपरेटर इफ द टेम्परेचर ऑफ दिस फिलर बल्ब इज मोर देन द सेट टेम्परेचर देन मोर अमाउंट ऑफ रेफ्रिजरेंट विल बी लेट टू बी सप्लाइड फ्रॉम द इवेपरेटर इफ इट टेम्परेचर इज लेस देन द एक्सपेंशन वाल्व विल बी थ्रॉटलिंग सम मोर सो हेयर वी आर सींग दैट दिस इज द थर्मोस्टेटिक एक्सपेंशन वाल्व विच विल बी कंट्रोलिंग द फ्लो ऑफ रेफ्रिजरेंट बाय यूजिंग दिस डायफ्राम अटैच थर्मोस्टेटिक एक्सपेंशन वाल्व नाउ इन दिस केस वी कैन ऑल्सो सी दैट देयर इज अ ट्रे सो दिस ट्रे विल बी यूज टू कलेक्ट वॉटर इफ एनी विच इज डीफ्रॉस्टेड एंड कलेक्टेड इन लिक्विड फॉर्म विच विल बी सेंट आउट ऑफ द सिस्टम बाय यूजिंग दिस पाइपलाइन हियर सो हेयर वी कैन सी दिस पाइपलाइन इज गोइंग आउट ऑफ द सिस्टम एंड फ्रॉम हेयर द वॉटर कैन बी ड्रेन आउट ऑफ दिस यूनिट सो एट द बैक साइड वी कैन सी दीज आर दिन्स फ्रॉम वेयर द एयर विल बी सक्ड इन बाय यूजिंग दिस इवेपरेटर डिफ्यूजर फैन एंड सप्लाइड सर्कुलेटेड इन साइड दिस स्पेस नाउ कमिंग ऑन टू द डोर साइड सो हेयर वी कैन सी दैट हाउ दिस डोर विल बी ऑपरेटेड सो दिस इज द हैंडल ऑफ डोर विच कैन बी ऑपरेटेड फ्रॉम इन साइड दिस इज यूज टू ओपन और क्लोज द डोर सो फॉर क्लोजिंग द डोर इट हैज टू बी जस्ट पुल एंड पुल्ड अप टिल द पॉइंट वेन दिस डोर क्लोजर रीच इज टू हियर सो दिस साइड वी कैन सी देर इज अ रोलर इन विच दैट लॉकिंग पिन विल बी अटैच टू वाइल पुशिंग दिस एंड टू ओपन दिस डोर वी हैव टू जस्ट पुश दिस लीवर सो हेयर वी कैन सी बाई पुशिंग दिस लीवर दिस pin is coming inside so this pin pin will be retracting and we will be leaving that locking roller pin and we can then pull the door out from the outside we can see that to close this cabinet we can just force the door so that this locking pin is behind this roller and to open this cabinet we can just pull this handle so that this roller pin retracts and we can then open this door coming on to the safety features we are having this bell here so we are having a safety bell so that if any person is stuck inside so he can ring that bell so there is a switch inside the cabinet which can be switched on when there is any case of emergency so that the persons working nearby can hear and come to open this cabinet there is one more display here so this display is for indicating the temperature so it will be indicating the air space temperature inside this cabinet so we can see that this temperature sensor for that air space indicator is located at this side so this sensor is sensing the temperature of air inside the cabinet and indicating what is the existing temperature inside this particular unit those are the switches for light and the emergency bell so for uh, tube light we are having one tube light installed inside this cabinet so that we can have proper lighting in case it is required and if not required we can switch it off